So welcome back everyone. So since you don't have anything better to do, I know this because you're watching YouTube videos, I thought you'd come out and hang out with Brian and I. Brian, it's been a while. Hey guys. We have uh, pretty much set the day aside for dealing with uh, getting everything ready for winter on the homestead. So we figured we have about, I think it was 17 or 18 small gas engines on the homestead uh, that all need to be serviced. I do this, I do this pretty much annually in the winter time. We change all the oils, uh, grease everything, get everything all buttoned up. So when the springtime comes, it's just one less thing to worry about. So we have a pretty big job cut out for us today. So Brian just got back from Napa. We got all the filters for everything. So we thought we'd bring you along and uh, share what little we know about it. And uh, we'll, we'll just take it from there. So what's this about these small engines making uh, your life easier? Yeah, right. Save, saving you time? It's supposed to be these labor-saving devices <laughs> that are so great. I don't think they take into account how much time you need to man maintain them. So if I had to guess, we're probably going to have two days into this. We'll probably today we'll get through the small engines and then we'll work on all of the implements and their other equipment, getting it greased and cleaned up and undercover because we're supposed to get snow this weekend, I heard. Friday. Friday. It's snow tomorrow. levels down to a thousand feet. So Brian's working on the, uh, the lawnmower there. So you're putting fuel filters, oil filter, oil change, air filter, all that type of stuff on there. Yeah. And here is all of our goodies. So we got our 30 weight, we got oil filters, we got new batteries, we got, I don't know, you name it, everything that needs done. We even got a few power tools, hand tools there that need a little bit of attention. We'll work on those. All right, here we go. Honda 2000 generator, Honda 5000 generator, John Deere X300, Honda fire pump, my brand new 2018 Clark Yale forklift, the power head for the Lucas sawmill, Jack's quad, five chainsaws, leaf blower, two string trimmers, so while Brian's working on a mower, the mower, um, I'm going to take the gas out of the, the Honda. Some of these things don't have, you don't have the ability to drain. So a little uh, hand pump like these guys are pretty handy where you can get most of it out. I run non-ethanol fuel in all small engines. And if you have the ability to get that, uh, certainly do it. It will save you a ton of aggravation. Uh, but all your engines that you're not going to use in the winter time, uh, be sure, and you want to store them dry, drain them with fuel, run them until the carburetor, uh, until the engine dies, and just leave them that way. That's the, that's the, the best way to do it. All the old fuel we take out of everything, we'll just put it, put it in this old metal can uh, to use it for uh, starting brush piles or the drip torches, uh, but not running engines. It's just... Fuel is not that expensive, um, and to try to save something past its, its prime is just going to give you troubles. And on any of the engines that get a fair amount of use, I'll replace the spark plugs annually as well. Uh, the little Honda, it's pretty important to us in the wintertime because we, we have the power go out a lot here, so we run it quite a bit. So at 3 in the morning, and I have to get out of bed to start it, I don't want to have any trouble. So I'll just go ahead and take that out of the equation. Pretty nice thing to be doing today when it's raining and nasty outside, isn't it? I'm sure happy I'm still not out there. Now let's pour the rest of this fuel out of here. Maybe I won't. What do you got going here? I am trying to figure out how to read this dipstick. Now, it, it's got nice markings on it, but unfortunately when I put it in, one side will give me a nice reading and the other side won't. So I'm really not sure how much oil is in here right now. So what happened to the beard? Uh, the beard, um, I'm very sad to see it go, but um, I joined the local volunteer fire department. So yeah, in order to... Uh, We're very happy to have Brian there. In order to participate, it had to go. So, how come it has to go? Um, for the, uh, the face mask that we the wear. The mask, yeah, right. To yep. provide breathing air. A lot of these air filters, if you don't use them a lot, or like the generator, when it gets used when it's kind of cold out, they don't, uh, don't get too dirty. And uh, I'll just clean them out. This one here is uh, actually one that's made to be cleaned. It looks really clean. Actually, I'm not even going to fool with that. A little bit of, still got a little filter oil in there. Some of these filters I'll put, you know, it depends on which ones they are, but you put a little light oil in them. And what that does is that really collects any dust and dirt. But I'm happy with that. So 
So I've got as much of the old fuel out as I can. Uh, it's not really, or yeah, it's not really old. I mean, it's, it's non-ethanol. It was put in in the spring because we used it, but I'll top it off here. This is a brand new fresh fuel. I got a leak there with ethanol, non-ethanol. And then uh, typically if you can, it's better to warm up your engine uh, before you drain the oil, it uh, mixes everything up, gets all of the sediment and stuff mixed into the oil, and then it'll come out and it drains a little bit quicker, but not super critical. But if you can, it's not a bad idea. Have you heard how much snow we're supposed to get, Brian? No. Um, I don't think it's going to be a lot, and I think it's not supposed to stick around. Oh, okay. Got the Honda pretty well warmed up there, so we'll drain it out now. I'm not super fan of this method for uh, draining the oil. It runs all over the body, but <laughs> all the best laid plans there. If it's oil or gas, I'll spill it. So this is the filler for this, and I was uh, just looking for a little, I remember I lost my little, I had a little funnel, but it broke, and uh, Brian here gave me a good idea. We're going to try it. He said you can make a funnel out of a fuel filter, as long as you're not in a hurry, right? Yeah, but you shouldn't be in a hurry for anything. <laughs> You were just saying about not being in a hurry. I, there was a friend of mine that was, he was the type of guy that was always getting in a hurry. He, only transportation he had was like a, this enduro dirt bike. It was like the old Yamaha. He was changing the oil and his buddies called like, hey man, we're, we're going out. We're going to go get some burgers. He's like, oh, I want to go. And he jumps on his bike and takes off. Of course, he hadn't put the oil back in it. Yeah. You know, so He didn't get too far. He didn't get very far. Brian says I should saw it. I was going to try to break it. You think I, you think it... I should saw it. Oh no, I've never tried to break it. Well, you, you. Well, we got a second one. We do have a. Let, let, uh, I've never taken the lid off of one of these. It's. Where's that panel tool at? That little uh, snap-on panel tool. Let's see if I can pop this off like Tupperware. Yeah. By the, I could have had it cut off, Brian. By the time. It's okay, you don't know until you try. How about that? That is a very a very tiny, tiny funnel. I think it'll work though. I'll give it a shot. It does make a good little funnel. Just gotta deburr it here. Get some of that. I don't want that plastic breaking off into the engine. Although that is a really good idea for oil for gas, I think it's just going to be a little too small for oil. But I'll save that for other things. What I what I've done in the past is to make a make a paper funnel. Um, take your knife. What do I do with my knife there? Take your knife and cut yourself a little kind of a funnel shaped deal. Hard to cut that wet paper. You can uh, kind of roll them up, shove it in there. And that'll get it done for you too.
Would you agree, Brian, for the common household, if you're going to have one generator, this would be a pretty hard to beat? I think so. I mean, given the size and how quiet and reliable they are, I think they're great. They are wonderful. After you change oil, uh, make sure you always run it and then recheck the oil. Sometimes there are different orifices and things that will need to get filled up and it will take your level down just a little bit, especially if you do filters. It's good if you can uh, pre-fill your filter with oil. It's easy to do if it goes up this way, but if it goes sideways, it's not so easy, but it can help. How many gallons does a Honda EB5000X of fuel hold? So the higher the octane number, the more resistant the fuel is to detonation, which means you can run a higher compression and your, your fuel is not going to explode before it gets hit by the spark from the spark plug. So Brian's gonna, we're gonna use stable for this, even though we use non-ethanol gas, uh, it's a lot. This thing holds, well, we figure over six gallons, yeah, six and but two gallons, and it doesn't, we don't run it that often. Usually we use a small generator, so uh, this will uh, will help help preserve the gas a little bit, uh, that stable product. Is, what, is it just gotta, how do you figure the ratio? Oh, okay, so on the back here it tells you, which is really helpful, because I would never remember, so one ounce treats two and a half gallons. Okay. So, and then you squeeze it, and how does that work on the yeah, top? Yeah. So there? you squeeze it, and the uh, fluid comes up the side, and then you can fill it to uh, whatever level. So over here, it's in milliliters. That's the metric system. That's the metric I'm glad system. you're here. Exactly. I wouldn't so, know. It. I just I just dump some in there. You would be able to read it. On the other side, <laughs> they provide ounces for you as well. Okay. So, 15 ml is approximately a half ounce. Okay. You know. So, um, so I put in. Now, two and a half ounces. It's okay to go a little thank over. You, thank you for that. You don't yeah, want to go nice. under, but it's okay to go a little over. So Brian just wrapped up the service hard. Now, if you remember, this thing wouldn't start in my previous video last year. It totally let me down. Uh, and I thought it was a spark plug. So you replaced the spark yep. plug? New spark plug. We've got new oil and we stabilize the fuel. And new, okay. Oh, and new fuel as well. New fuel. All right. Let's see. Okay, so let's see your engine on. Our circuit breaker here, I guess it, we'll just leave that on. I'm guessing uh, 20 poles and I'll have to start pulling on 20 it. 20 poles. Hmm. Fuel on, choke on. I don't to wager. I don't know. <laughs> you're a, you're a, a Honda fanboy like me, right? I, yeah, I mean, I try not to fanboy for stuff, but I can't help myself, you know. I, I'm a big fan of their small engines. So. I love Honda. You want to try? You, you go ahead. Oh, okay. I already pulled on that thing many times. Oh, goodness. <laughs> so I guess it was the plug. Yeah. Yeah, it must have been the spark plug after all. I got a new battery for my quad because I had to originally kickstart it and let's just see if we can get this installed. We're going to put the acid in it. Mm -hmm. Correctly without spilling. Don't spill the acid. You don't say. First you bring me the metric system, Brian, and then you well, want me to read the, read the instructions. What are you, European? Well, I do notice I was able to start that job. <laughs> That's true. Well, maybe it was the metric spark plug. It must have been. Okay, I'm not reading these instructions here. I, I can tell by looking at it here. I'm a pretty reasonable guy. Okay, so here, Take this is a back. this is a first for me. I've never seen a battery that didn't come with the acid in there. So it looks to me that these correspond here. Oh, that, that's that's exactly what they do. So if we take this cap off of here, oh goodness. Here, Jack, this Did, is a good job for you. Body puncture those for you. Oh. You may not have to peel those. You're absolutely right. These things have a point on them. I, uh, I wouldn't do it upside down. Should I do it upside down? Should I well, pu puncture it like that? Point, then just, they'll just go down. So. They will just Plus, go down. The one holding acid, so. Okay. So we'll just do this, huh? Oh, that's clever. Look at it. <laughs> I love it. I have never seen that. <laughs> that is pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Look at that. That is real. That's really interesting, isn't it? To just uh, cut those little uh, foils and it just drains in there. I love it. Okay, so I just pressed the lid on there. It seems to be pretty well sealed. 
Won't have to be to be at the ATV. They slosh around so much. All right, so now we have to charge it really low, right? Did you say no more than two no amps? No more than two amps. Look at your watch. In uh, 30 minutes, we'll uh, turn this on and start it. Now, um, you see this charger? I don't think I've shown you how to use this before. It's got different amperages, so it'll charge a lot or a little. Imagine like a big fire hose or a small fire hose. So we'll turn it down to the uh, two amp. That's the lowest setting, mm -hmm. and then it'll charge it very slowly, mm -hmm. um, and then it'll hold charge better. So in 30 minutes, put the red on the positive and the black on the negative, and then turn it on. As soon as it starts, let go of it. If you leave it engaged, the starter motor is grinding on the flywheel, and it chews up the teeth. All right, jump in there. You remember how to run this? Looks good. You got a clear shot. Tilt your forks back a bit. So pull that, pull that right lever towards you. All right. There we go. All right. Just take it up to however high Brian wants it. All right. Keep setting it up. I want to get a look at the other side. <laughs> this is what I, I call my poor, right there. my poor man's hoist. What do you think? This is it right here. I'd say that's it right there. All right. You may be able to um, spin it off by hand now. So if you pop the wrench off, like so. Do you see this frick, this uh, texture on here? That's called knurling. Mm -hmm. And they put that on there so you can grip it when your hands are oily. You can grip it and use it and turn it like that. Now this, you don't want to drop your oil plug in the, in the oil. So spin it until you feel it's loose and then carefully back it down and then lean it down and, and then capture it. Put my hand over here in case it falls. I'll try and grab it. But that looks good. Nice. Happiness is a new blade, Brian. It is. I don't even know what to, what to expect here. Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. And I might have you uh, hold a, I'll hold this, let's get one screw started. I got them here in my pocket. I'll give you the nut. Oh, it th they thread in. Oh, really? They thread in, and those are just safety keepers. Oh, well, that's, that's great. That's clever. Thanks, Australia. Well, Australia, you guys are so smart. Not bad for that island off the New Zealand coast, right? <laughs> just a little island down there next to New Zealand. <laughs> Did you save any of your special apple cider for tonight? Ah, uh, special cider. Yeah, I've got a little bit of that put away. WD-40, if it's good enough to protect nuclear missile housings, it's good enough for saw blades, right? I didn't realize they used it on missile housings. I was, I read somewhere that's what it was developed for or something to do with Minuteman missiles or, but you know, who knows if that stuff's the truth. So when did you learn how to pour those things correctly? Oh, about four years ago. <laughs> I was late in life learning that myself. It, it seems so obvious once you learn it, but. <laughs> it's counterintuitive when you first do it right, though. For many years I did it wrong, just completely wrong. So Brian's doing the filter on the, on the Lucas Mill, and Lucas Mill had two fuel filters on that. These new engines are pretty susceptible to fuel. I think, it, is that fuel injected, that one? It's got, so, yeah. it's got a, yeah, they, they, you really want to have clean fuel on these newer engines, so that's why they put two on. 
Uh, unfortunately, they they didn't have uh, they didn't put reusable clamps on there. So, thanks to Granddad's bolt bin again, of course, he saved all this stuff. It would have been normally been a trip to the hardware store. It's not the most valuable thing he ever gave me. Was that uh, bolt box of bolt or that whole uh, chest of drawers of bolts? Oh, these clamps, Granddad's old clamps are USA made. Relics. When was the last time something like that was made here? Have you noticed that the new cheap ones, like they sell at Home Depot, will say they say stainless steel, but the screw is not stainless? I, you know, I haven't seen that written on there particularly, but I have seen them rust. Yeah, and so the screw rusts and the clamp fails, uh, and it doesn't matter that the rest of it's stainless steel. I mean, to save what, pennies? Oh, probably not even that, pennies per hundred or something. Pennies sure. per hundred? That had a little rubber grommet that went in the tank. Yeah, I put that back in. That's so. in there, okay. So those clamps that I put on there, Brian? Yes. My grandfather was a mechanic his whole life. He, he hated those things. The early cars came out with those from the factory and then they got cheap and they put the, you know, the, the spring type right. here. Whenever he'd buy a car, he'd go through and replace them all. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's some dedication right there. I mean, he'd worked on so many that it leaked that he just <laughs> wouldn't have it. No, and these are still made in the USA. I wonder how old these are. Those could be anywhere from 1946 uh, to 1990, wow. somewhere in there. All right, so we're gonna hook it up at the bottom here first. You know, Brian, we didn't quite get what, as much done as we were hoping. No, not everything, but um, you did say it might take two days to get it all done. <laughs> it will, yeah, it'll take two days. Well, we worked, uh, speaking of days, we worked many days uh, getting the shop cleaned out, and it is looking so good. Brian's done a great job in here, and he's done the lion's share of it. I helped him one day, I think. It feels really good to have all this open space to work in. Yeah, so we have, uh, this is a 40 by 60, so we have enough space to bring all of the equipment that we use all the time, you know, the main tractor and snowplow stuff in here. And then uh, Brian and I put up the extra shelving on the backside and got rid of all the small stuff. So that got everything off the floor. So we have the whole floor now that we can work on. We actually have room to use the forklift. And uh, we'll keep the tractor and the snowplow and stuff in there, so. But yeah, it's very nice. We caught most of the leaks. The roof was leaking really bad. I think the snow, maybe that snow and ice drug some of the screws out. Um, and we got up there a couple weeks ago and did that and we've, we've got two or three little tiny leaks But we identified them so we'll get that up. It's pretty much dry compared to what it was Before the, the worst leak was right over the vise right where you wanted to work. It was dripping there all the time All right. Well, that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed that. That was a very exciting exciting video, but uh, I'm happy to get a lot of this done We'll finish it up next week we'll See you later